In 2008, shortly after those uh, fateful elections, I penned an article or a post where I posed the question, what is the real cost of stealing an election? Yeah, you can see that uh, some illustrations in front of your screens right now from that uh, post I did in, on my Kumekucha blog in 2008. Okay. Now, the 2017 election has obviously been very costly. Uh, we all know what has happened to the economy. Yeah. It's very sad because what normally happens is that uh, if you have a business that's a bit shaky or other business that is uh, going through a bit of a difficult time, uh, which is on very tough and uh, tight timelines with banks, what normally happens when something small goes wrong, like the annulled uh, presidential elections, it just sends everything into chaos. And that's why auctioneers have been very busy, very extremely busy over the last few weeks very sad okay but then i'd like to put something to you it is possible to replace money people lose money they replace it people lose uh, companies yeah and they get them back yeah a very good example is steve jobs yeah, he lost the whole company which he founded yeah apple yeah, but then he came back yeah in short you, you know money and material things you can lose and you can get them back but then there's something else that you can lose during a general election, especially in Kenya, that you can never get back. Okay? Now I'm talking about the unfortunate situation where we lost returning officers in these elections. Now this is something which is very strange because we have never lost returning officers in, during general elections before. Okay? And it may point to some of the dirty underhand things that are going on in these elections. Because the circumstances surrounding the death of some of these uh, uh, returning officers is very, very fishy. Okay? I'm going to look at two particular cases that happened in the 2017 elections, and uh, you know, which have really shocked me. I've tried to do further investigations and so on and so forth, but I've just hit a brick wall. So I'm just going to present what I have so far, yeah, because already it's very, very revealing. Now, the late Caroline Odinga was uh, the deputy returning officer at the Miyari Primary School polling station in Siaya County. Okay? She was the deputy uh, presiding officer. Now, she disappeared, and then her very, very badly mutilated body was found, yeah, not far from where she lived. Yeah? And to make matters worse, she had very strange injuries on her ears. Uh, which could have implied some sort of torture, yeah? And then very unfortunately, she had also been raped, yeah, gang raped, yeah, yeah? Because uh, her private parts had very, very severe injuries, okay? Now, of course, uh, we hear the same uh, story from the police, we shall investigate, but to date, nothing has happened. And I'd bet you, nothing will happen. Now, why would the presiding officer have to die? Okay, now obviously the time of death, the man of death implies that it had something to do with her work as an IBC deputy presiding officer. This woman was, of course, was married, and her husband, a Mr. Matthias Otieno, uh, had some very interesting revelations. He said that the previous previous day, the day prior to her disappearance and death. He had overheard a conversation between her and another female presiding officer and uh, they were complaining about massive interrogation during their meeting with ABC officials. Yeah? And then she goes to collect her pay uh, from the work she had done at the ABC or something like that. And uh, suddenly her phone is switched off and she's never seen again. So the next time that she's seen, she's a dead body, thrown in a field. Oh boy. Now we'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll tie up this uh, very strange murder, brutal murder of a presiding officer in the last elections. And then I'll also give you a very interesting case of a presiding officer who died to be with Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> that should be very interesting, yeah? I'll catch you after the short commercial break. Oops, we interrupt this Kumekucha video for a brief message of interest. I'm really, really excited today to announce this golden new opportunity for you to reach your, a huge audience in Kenya and all over the world with the brief commercials for your business. 
they will of course interrupt our videos just like this message you're taking in. And like the Kumekucha videos, they'll be permanent. And what is more, we are so committed to ensuring that you get the results you desire that will allow you to place the spot for free. Yep, you'll not be able to, you'll not pay for it, yeah? You'll only pay for it when you're fully satisfied with the results. Of course, you'll request a small fee for the video production, but it's a pittance. This is a golden opportunity for you, and I recommend that you take it on immediately. Get all the details you require in the video description area on this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening to me. All for a better Kenya. Now, let us get back to your Kumekucha video. Welcome back. Now, we, we have no idea what happened to Caroline Odinga, and we cannot speculate uh, what happened to her, but then she was 39 years old. Uh, but uh, there are a few things we know about these elections. Yeah? We know that uh, there was a very desperate attempt to forge Form 34As. Yeah? These are the forms from the polling stations. Okay? And we, we know that uh, people were visited and forced to uh, sign yeah, long after the elections, yes. Um, and we know people were forced to do certain things. Okay, that one we know so far. Okay. Now it is very interesting, an interesting aside here is one of the changes Jubilee is proposing is to make it a criminal offense for an IBC returning officer to refuse to sign. Yeah. Now I find that particular uh, amendment to the electoral laws very mischievous. Yeah, because I can imagine this poor returning officer somewhere. Yeah, he has already finished his work. He has signed the genuine uh, forms, giving the results, and then somebody comes back to him with a full scap. Yeah, of course a government agent, and tells him, uh, or rather even not a full scap, maybe forged uh, uh, documents, and tells the, and tells him or her, you must sign here. Yeah, you know it's a criminal offense if you don't sign. Eh, and you know um, a person being a government officer means that the form they present will be the genuine one, yeah? I mean, you, your word against a government officer, of course, you're not going to win, yeah? So I can imagine many returning officers are camping to that pressure and actually signing those forms. Oh, boy. I mean, those laws are just... They're, 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 they make me want to throw up. Anyway, we can imagine that uh, there was something that Caroline either refused to do, the late Caroline Odinga, okay? Or there was some information she had about these very, very, very strange general elections we had. Actually, they were not elections. This fuss of an, of fuss we had that we call an election, yeah, and that is why she had to lose her life. I take this opportunity to really send my sympathies to the family, yeah. I pray that God be God be with you that you may recover from that loss, yeah. We're so sorry for your loss as Kenyans, okay? Yeah. Now, but there's another case, uh, and this was a very interesting case, in Nairobi, and the polling station was in Bakasi. Now, the, the late Mr. Orenge Nyabicha was the presiding officer at the Imara Daima polling station during the August 8th uh, polls. Okay? Now, it's very interesting because he's a former sub-editor of the Standard Newspapers. Okay? Anyway, his body was found in his house at uh, Quarry Pipeline area. And uh, a post-mortem at the city mortuary conducted uh, indicated that he had died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, aliwasha jiko na kafunga madrisha yote, something like that. Okay. Now, um, what I found odd, you know, what didn't make sense for me, and I'm sure some of you have, have already guessed, is the fact that uh, we know that when people have died, it normally post-mortems normally take time. Yeah, in fact, there's some postmortems which have never come out. <laughs> but Orenge Nyabicha's uh, postmortem came out almost as soon as his body had landed at the city mortuary. I found that odd, don't you? Yeah, and then even more odd was the suicide note he left behind. Okay, um, the family said they had not seen any suicide note, but then the police at Mbakasi village station. Uh, said that uh, the note said he was frustrated with IBC, IEBC's failure to deliver a credible, free, and fair election. Yeah, and also he had uh, realized that the possibility of Kenya realizing change uh, was not feasible, and therefore he was going to heaven 
to be in the company of Mahatma Gandhi. Wow. Now, first of all, I know it is true you cannot uh, tell who, who can commit suicide and who cannot. But this particular case is very, very fishy. Yeah? The circumstances, yeah? carbon, dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide uh, poisoning, yeah? the very, very speedy post-mortem, yeah? and then the fact that this person was a, a sub-editor. You know, a sub-editor is a very knowledgeable person. Yeah? Um, it, this does not really make sense to me. There's something here that's not quite right, okay? And therefore, I, I, I suspect, I suspect, I've chosen my words carefully, I suspect that they may have been foul play, okay? So that's another uh, returning officer we lost during the general elections. And in any case, committing suicide uh, after being a presiding officer in an election does not make very much sense for a presiding officer. Maybe a support of a particular party, maybe a diehard supporter, that, that would make sense, those are common. But a presiding officer, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's not normal, okay? Anyway, that's what has happened. I mean, that, I'm just trying to rewind, to, to review what has, because so much happened in this general election and after, that uh, some of these things that may appear small, people tend to forget and put them on the side, yeah? Now, the death of somebody is not small, yeah? And the fact that there were at least two presiding officers who lost their lives as a result of, as a result of the last general election, elections is not good. Yeah? And it suggests that uh, there was a lot of funny, funny things going on in these general elections, especially because one was an outright murder, murder and rape. Yeah? Gosh. Yeah? It suggests that there was something very fishy, something very funny, something very evil that went down during these general elections we've just come through, okay? My hope is that uh, sometime in the future, these cases can be reviewed and the truth can be unearthed, yeah? Because it is not right for us to lose people like this during general elections, okay? But it just goes to show you the kind of country we live in. I can imagine if anybody wants to be a presiding officer now with this kind of information, they'd really have to think twice. Yeah, because it appears to be an extremely dangerous and uh, perilous uh, job. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.